Hello and welcome to the River and Panhandle's weekly podcast. We are so excited that you are tuning in for this week's message. Before we get started, there are a few things that we would love for you to do. Share it, subscribe, and rate the podcast. So the message is about to begin. We hope that you are encouraged and that you always remember no role is insignificant. Every life matters and go out and make a difference. Praise the Lord this morning, everybody. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. Y'all got your seatbelts on? All right. <laughs> you like that, huh? You got to have a Holy Ghost seatbelt, man. <laughs> Amen. Bless God. Giving honor to God in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Joe Tindall, and I'm, I'm just grateful to be home again. Did y'all hear me? See, because this is my father's house. And there'll never be a time when I walk into my daddy's house that I don't feel like I'm at home. Amen. Y'all may say, well, this is a river. You're from the law. If Jesus Christ is Lord. Don't forget. Amen. Bless God. And I thank God for that. Amen. You know, I tell you, Les, you, you probably know this. Man, isn't it funny how you can do fine all week? I did good all week long running my mouth. The moment the Lord had me on stage to preach his holy word, all of a sudden all that crud that everybody's been dealing with is messing with me. You ever been there? All of a sudden it's like you can't talk, you don't have enough air. But I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. God sent me to, do, to preach his gospel, and that's what I come to do. Amen. So y'all pray my strength in the Lord. You know, when I was a kid growing up um, and going to service each and every day, it seemed like seven days a week with my mama. <laughs> hey, I got to tell y'all something. This is true. One time we were going to church so much, my little brother looked at my mom and said, mom, I almost rather go to hell. <laughs> it's like, what? what is wrong with you, boy? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Needless to say, my mom almost knocked him out that seat, but that's a whole nother story. Hey, Amen. <laughs> That boy is still wild. Anyways, when we were in service, and those, them, those deacons would get up, get ready to open up service, because we was in the Baptist church, and uh, the deacons would be on each side there, and they had me, the little kid, come up there to help them open up the devotional service, right? And uh, the deacons would get up there, and they'd sing this song, and they said, Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. I'm singing glory to his name. Anybody know this song? I'm singing glory to his name, precious name. I'm singing glory to his name, precious name. There to my heart was the blood applied. I'm singing glory to his name. I'm going to sing it one more time. Don't be shy, y'all. Come on. Singing glory to his name, precious name. I'm singing glory to his name, precious name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. I'm singing glory to his name. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Woo! Get ready, get ready, get ready. Let's go. Yes, sir. Oh, they forgot to warn y'all. Y'all had never been here before when I was here. Hey, Amen. I get a little hyped. Okay? So y'all just pray my strength in the Lord. That's the only warning you get. <laughs> my wife's sitting up there like, yeah, his motor never shuts off. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Let every heart pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you, Daddy, for your goodness, grace, and mercy. 
Father, we glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because, Daddy, I confess and I believe with my whole heart that Jesus Christ is Lord to your glory. Father, even for the benefit of those that may have come that don't believe, Master, do a mighty good work right now in the name of Jesus. Master, that we don't go out like we came in, Father God. But, Master, you sanctify our hearts, Lord God. Circumcise our hearts, Lord God. Master, whatever it takes to do your will, let your Holy Spirit have thine own way. Father, I surrender my all and my everything to you in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you'll speak to me and speak through me what thus saith the Lord, Father God, that you may be glorified. All praise, honor, and glory is yours, Lord God. I would not dare rob you of your glory. So, Daddy, we thank you, thank you, thank you for your goodness, grace, and mercy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. Amen. Let's go, y'all. Y'all ready? (laughs) Woo! Y'all better wake up. You you, you, You got your boy in your house. Come on now. Here we go. Listen, Jesus calms the storm. Jesus calms the storm. We're going to be in Mark chapter 4, starting at verse number 21. Mark chapter 4, verse number 21. Bless God. And we see here that Jesus is speaking in parables. You know, and, and when I think about parables, I think about, you know, simply uh, a story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson, right? That's what a parable is. But to break it down a little bit more, you think about using an earthly example to bring home a heavenly meaning. Using an earthly example to bring home a heavenly meaning. So that's what the parables parables are. That's what they they were, bless God, and still today. Using an earthly illustration to bring home a heavenly meaning. And so picking up, reading at verse number 21, and I and I want to say this, I was talking to my dear brother Les. And I know that God has been using him to minister the gospel. Glory to Jesus. Keep on doing it. You know, and, and oftentimes, man, when you're preaching the gospel, man, it's just like all kind of hell's coming at you. You understand? You can't please nobody. Well, desire to please Christ Jesus. Amen. And then you hit the target. You understand? Because see, you may not be what everybody likes. I'm so far beyond that. <laughs> and I don't like him. And. You didn't call me Jesus did. That's the truth. See, some folks don't like that when you talk like that in church. Well, I do. Amen? Because I got to do what God called me to do, man. It's that serious. It's that serious. Verse number 21. The Bible says this. Jesus said to them, do you bring a lamp and put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on a stand? Check this out. If a lamp doesn't help people see the Lord Jesus, it is useless. Come on, somebody. If the light that Jesus has shown in your life doesn't help folks, don't point folks to Christ Jesus, it's useless. There's no two ways about it. Listen, in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 14 and 16, the Bible says this, and this is that parallel scripture. The Bible says this, you are the light of the world. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen? So we must not hide our light. If we have the truth of God that dwells in, inside of us, we have the solemn responsibility to spread the truth of God's holy word as the Lord gives us that opportunity. Come on, church. I know I ain't in the dead church this morning. We can back up and sing some more old gospel songs if y'all want to get, get wake up. <laughs> y'all pray for me. I need a lot of holy, a lot of help. Y'all know that, right? <laughs> Woo! Question. I got a question for you. What is the bowl in your life? What is the bowl in your life? What hinders you from letting the Holy Spirit light shine in you and shine out of you? Come on, somebody. You know, is it is it uh is it you become very complacent? And just being religious? Is it unforgiveness in your heart? Resentment? Jealousy? Anger? Envy? Stubborn heart? Guilt? Shame? Disobedience? What is the bowl in your life that hinders your light, the light of Christ Jesus, from shining in you and out of you? Come on, somebody. Y'all help me preach this message. I won't be long. But if y'all stay quiet, I'm going to take all day. And your stomach going to be speaking in tongues. Lord, help help us, Lord, help us. Verse number 22, listen. 
For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. That's what the Word of God says, right? So if the Lord has hidden his holy word in your hearts, then he intends for us to share this with the world around us. Wouldn't y'all agree? See, we are not supposed to get all we can and can all we get. I can tell y'all ain't pickled nothing. <laughs> I can go this far, right? I can go right here and come back over here. <laughs> yeah, we do that, right? Unfortunately, we do it. We get all we can from the Lord and try to can all we get. I heard my sister say when she was praying, she said, Lord, we don't come to receive. We, we come that we should glorify you. Amen? Because the receiving is already there. If you come with the right heart, you've received everything from the Lord that God has to give you when his son rose from the grave. Come on now. Man, I ain't seen you smile yet. I'm getting nervous. I'm getting, okay, there we go. All right. I ain't nervous. Anyways, <laughs> there is no such thing as a secret saint. Oh, we don't like this preacher. Come on, y'all. Seriously. How many stories have you ever heard when people talk about Somebody's getting ready to retire, and then some of the people around the water cooler during the retirement party, they said, uh, I didn't even know he was a Christian. I worked with him for 37 years. <laughs> Jesus calms the storm. Amen? There is no such thing as a secret saint. Bless God. You know, I'm, I'm, be, I'm just putting it on the floor. I've gotten to the point where folks say, you're getting on my nerves with all that Jesus stuff. Okay. What am I supposed to do? Stop? Hey, Amen. It's like fire shut up in my bones. I don't know how to stop. Glory to God. But you know what's interesting is the same people, when their family members lying at the point of death or when they need a, a word from God, will secretly come and say, hey, Joe, can I talk to you? There is no such thing as a secret saint, church. Come on, somebody. In Mark chapter 8, verse number 38, the Bible says this. If anyone is ashamed of me and my word in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes into the Father's glory with the holy angels. The Word of God backs itself, doesn't it? Glory to Jesus. Verse number 23. I got to move for the sake of time. Check this out. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. Um, are y'all familiar with the GTB? That's the Ghetto Translation Bible. <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> Listen, Jesus said, if anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. He said, hey, bro, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> See, it is like when you have a child and you say to him, you say to them, did you hear me? No. You were standing right there. I was looking at you eye to eye. Did you hear me? Hey, Amen. I ain't going to pick because I got some kids in the house, so all right. <laughs> and then you want to turn around and tell them, if you heard me, why didn't you do what I asked you to do? <laughs> That's what the Spirit of God is saying to us. Can you hear me now? Bless God. Because, see, there might come some time in our life, amen, when the Holy Spirit has to pump our brakes. And the Lord said, can you hear me now? Do I have your attention now? See, because I could have saved you from going through all that heartache and heartbreak if you would just listen to me. Glory to God. Verse number 24 picks up reading. It says, consider carefully what you hear. He continued, Jesus continued, with the measure you use, it will be measured to you and even more. Listen, Christians should be careful to put themselves under good teachers uh, good preachers teaching the whole counsel of the word of God, pure, true gospel, not a watered down version of the gospel. That's what the Bible's talking about. We need to still call sin, sin. Amen? Because you know what the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 5, verse number 20, it says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Oh, well, in our church, we don't talk about them subjects. Jesus does. So you should be. Amen. Well, we don't want to offend anybody. 
If I read correctly, there's a whole bunch of people offended in Christ Jesus. And Jesus told us they're not offended in you, they're offended in me. Amen. But the cool part about it is I'm the one who knows how to calm the storm in their life. You just do what I sent you to do. Amen. You got me hyped, man. I'm I'm ready to go. Let's go. (laughs) See, God will respond to us as we respond to him and his holy word. We can't make God's holy word fit our unholy agenda. Bless God. See, I'm not even preaching. I'm just teaching. Wait till I start preaching. Hey, man, I love y'all so much. Thank y'all for being patient with me. Verse number 25, the Bible says this. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. When we hear the word of God and receive it with gladness, more will be given to us from the Lord God Almighty and his spiritual riches. In Matthew chapter 5, verse number 6, the Bible says this. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Ain't that right, mother? That's what the word of God says. When you hunger and thirst for righteousness, when you do what daddy called you to do, amen, the Lord said you shall be filled. It's a great many of us sitting here today with a storm raging in our life, and there's an emptiness, and you are trying to fill it with things that are ungodly. And all the while, the Spirit of God is standing there. I got something to feel that if you let me in. Come on, church. Those substances, those things, all these other things, they'll never fill you up. But Jesus can. Well, Lord, I've been dealing with this for a long time. I know. I've been watching you. Amen? Verse number 26 and 27, the Bible says, He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. Don't miss this, church. A man scattered seed on the ground night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, uh, though he does not know how. Listen, the breakdown on that scripture is this. Man has done what only he can do by planting the seed, and God has done what only God can do by growing the seed. That's what that scripture is talking about. See, as, as, as members of the body of Christ, we can only do so much, right? Until you reach a point where you feel like you're so worn out, Lord, help. You know, Lord, help. The response hasn't changed. They keep coming, God, and the response hasn't changed. And, Lord, they're beginning to wear me out. But, see, there's only certain things that God can do that we can't do. Amen. Excuse me. God can do all things but fail. There's only certain things we can do. Let me get it straight. Bless God. See, this shows that the word of God works invisibly within us. God promised us that his word shall accomplish its purpose for what he set it out to fulfill. You can find that in Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 11. The Lord said, said, my word shall not, my word shall go forth and not return to me void, but shall fulfill that for which I set for it to do. You see what I'm saying? So when we hear the word of God, you know, whether we're asleep or awake, God is still working. He is still at work. Amen. It, it, uh, see, it works in us spiritually in a way that is invisible to our eyes. <laughs> Have you been walking with the Lord and God has already fixed your situation and you look around and be like, wow, look at God. When did that happen? And the daddy's looking at you just smiling, baby, I got you. Amen. I've been working on that situation all while you was going through the storm. I was working on it. I was fixing it for you. Thank you, Jesus. Check this out. You know why? Because the secret of growth is in the seed, which is the word of God. It's not in the soil. It's not in the water. And it's not in the weather. But it's in the seed. So you get the word of God in you. Amen. And that's what comes out is the word of God. Glory to Jesus. And as you continue to mature and grow in the things and the word and the will of God, and the Lord continues to circumcise your heart and, 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 and you continue, we, we, excuse me, continue to grow, we realize that the secret is in the seed, which is the word of God. Verse number 28, the Bible reads, it says, 
All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. Excuse me. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts a sickle to it because the harvest has come. This scripture speaks of spiritual maturity. I just touched on that. It speaks of sanctification process, a maturing in Christ Jesus. And isn't it funny that sometimes we read these scriptures over and over and never really have a full understanding of what the word of God is talking about? Well, that's, that's what this is talking about. It's talking about spiritual maturity, spiritual conviction of sin and repentance from sin. That's what the word of God is talking about here. See, look, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 21 through 28, there's another parallel scripture to this one we just read. Because it talks about, when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the word of truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regards to your former ways of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be, put, to be made new in the attitude of your mind, and to put on a new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. When you were taught, then the Spirit of God went to work in you, and you begin to mature, and you begin to grow. You begin to sprout. Amen? You begin to look differently in Christ Jesus. That's what, this, that's what the Word of God is talking about there. Verse number 30, it says this. Again, Jesus said, what shall I say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all the garden plants, with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. How many times do y'all hear people talking about the mustard seed? <laughs> Amen. I know I used to use, try to use the example of it all the time. But it runs much deeper than what we think. The Bible talks about how large the mustard seed grows, right? But what is it? See, Jesus used this parable to explain that even though Christianity has a, had a very small beginning, look how it has grown in the worldwide community of believers. That's what that mustard seed parable is about. And the Lord had to show me that. That's why the scripture says, never despise the day of small things. Well, Lord, our church is just tiny. Keep on keeping on in Jesus. And watch what God does. Amen? Lord, our, our pastor has been called to another place. Keep on keeping on in Jesus. Amen? We're not dealing with no Ichabod here. Hello, the Spirit of God is still here. Come on, somebody. God is still in the place. I know he is. Amen. The old song used to say, because I can feel him all over me. Come on, somebody. And when the scripture right there talks about the birds, that represents everyone who would come and take shelter in Christ Jesus. Those who are willing to go out and preach the gospel in spirit and in truth, but yet rest and abide in Christ Jesus. We just in Bible study this morning, y'all. <laughs> but it's good to know, amen, that God's word backs itself. It's good to know the breakdown of the scripture, isn't it? Come on, somebody. Verse number 33, it says this. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke, to the word, spoke the word to them. He spoke the word to them. The seed, he gave them the seed. Bless God. As much as they could understand, he did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Do y'all remember a show? Because I'm, I'm about to be 50 soon. All right. And there used to be a show on TV called G.I. Joe. Yeah, you know it. I heard you. I heard you. The great American hero. All right. And one thing they used to say on G.I. Joe was, knowing is half the battle. And they told me as I was growing up, Les, that if I know better, I could do better. Amen? They told some of y'all that too, huh? I saw y'all slump in the seat like, ooh, miss me with that. So if you know better, you should do better, amen? That's why the scripture said that Jesus gave them the word. Jesus spoke in parables in order to challenge the sincere seekers to search with their whole heart 
what he was talking about and to weed out the religious imposters. Woo! I hit y'all with that Ric Flair. Woo! Y'all say, that boy ain't got good sense. Amen. <laughs> y'all start me to laugh and this message is a wrap. <laughs> Amen. Jesus was doing two things here. Because it's just so funny when they go to talking about mega churches and I'm like, they read their Bible? Because everywhere Jesus went, they went to mega church. Amen. But then he would steal away with his disciples and break down these parables. Because some things is caught and some things are taught. Bless God. I see you, man. Nice glasses on your face. and Okay. Yeah. You know I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm going to quit picking on people, man. I love y'all so much. I really do. Y'all can pick on me, too. I'm bald. <laughs> oh, my bad. My hair got in my eyes. <laughs> oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Listen. <laughs> Jesus, when he was preaching the gospel, amen, he preached. But then he would also teach. You understand what I'm saying? And the reason being is some people can get so excited about the miracles that's taking place. Some people can get so excited about just the events, the religious events that's happening. But how many of them are willing to go the distance with Jesus? Amen. See, I tell people all the time, don't get excited about Joe Tindall. Amen. I'm still a work in progress. Get excited about Christ Jesus. Amen. Because that's who I came to see. And I pray that's who you came to see. Glory to Jesus. And don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Listen, as we prepare to close, if I can get the music up, play softly, Bray. Softly. <laughs> oh, man, I love picking on people. That's my wife. <laughs> that's my man, though. Bray, Bray, Bray. I got a son named Braylon. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and Ryder and Ricky and a daughter named Kennedy and a beautiful wife named Jennifer. And we back to the message. Amen. Verse number 35. Verse number 35. Y'all like that. That was smooth, huh? That was, like, that was smooth. Amen. Oh, Lord, I love y'all for real. Verse number 35. Jesus calms the storm. Listen to this. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There was also other boats with them. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on the cushion, on the my pillow cushion. The disciples woke him and said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Jesus got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still, peace, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Jesus said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still not have faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. We know we've been Hanging out with this man for a while now, but man, who is this? Who is this that the winds and the waves obey him? And you know what the question is this morning? Because truth be told, a lot of folks have been hanging out with Jesus for a while, even sitting right here. And when God moves in your life, some of you still ask, who is this? Hey, man. Who is this that the winds and the waves that were assailing against my life obey him? Well, his name is Jesus, the one true and living God. Not Buddha, not Muhammad, not none of that. His name is Jesus. Amen? Glory to God. You see, first things first, the disciples quickly forgot what Jesus had told them. Jesus said, let us go over to the other side. He did not say, let us go into the sea and drown. Amen. 
And the reason is, when the Logos word becomes rhema in your life, and when Jesus speaks something in your life, he's going to take you over to the other side. Can I get a witness? Amen? And if Jesus has spoken to you, ain't no devil in hell can do nothing to stop God's promise. Come on, somebody. Woo, hallelujah. I preach myself happy. That's, that's all right. <laughs> you see, church, there is a storm. That's probably raging in your life today. There may be a storm raging in your life today. And if it is, then it is still time to you to go wake up Jesus in your life. Come on, somebody. Jesus, please wake up in my life. I'm drowning. But don't forget the promise that God made to you. Amen. You see, because when we face storms in our life, we must have faith in the word and the will of God in Christ Jesus. You see, many people want to have religion in Christ Jesus, but they forget that it's more important to have a relationship with God in Christ Jesus. Come on, somebody. And uh, when the storm comes into our lives, it is our, is our soul, is our soul, is our soul anchored in Christ Jesus. Amen. When I was a kid growing up, brother, they used to tell me, there's a storm out uh, over the ocean, and it's moving this old way. But if your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Come on, somebody. Is your soul anchored in Jesus? Because I guarantee you upon everything, he is the only one that knows how to calm the storm that's raging in your life. And I said it and I said it again. He's not looking at you for having a religious experience. He's looking at you and calling you through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's calling you to have a relationship with him. Amen. Bless God. Because see, on your best day, you can't handle it alone. But Jesus can. Amen. And you know, when people tell me less, they say, Joe, how was your day going? Did you have a bad day? I said, listen, man, I don't have bad days. I have bad moments, and I don't get them mixed up. It might be some hell raging in my life, but I don't have bad days. I have bad moments because I know my God is still able. Amen? Church, as I prepare to close, I want to remind you that only Jesus can calm the storm in your life. But you got to trust in him. You got to remember the promise he spoke to you about. I'm going to carry you over to the other side. Amen. Bless God. And sometimes the other side might look like what we call death, but it's all right. Amen. Sometimes it might look like when people want to walk away from you. Amen. You just got to have the gift of goodbye. Amen. Y'all keep on stepping. I'm going to keep walking with Jesus. Amen? Because he's the only one I know that can lead me from earth to heaven when the storm is raging in my life. If you would, please stand if you're able. Listen, I love you to life. But I can't do it for you. But Jesus can. So while the blood is running warm in your veins... And we be prepared to close this message. If the Spirit of God is speaking expressly to your heart to come to Jesus before it's everlasting too late, don't let it be said too late. Amen? Let every heart pray. Father, we do thank you in the name of Jesus for your goodness, grace, and mercy. We thank you for your holy and grafted word, almighty God. Master, I thank you for every soul that's in the house today, Father God. I pray for every home that's represented here, Lord God. I plead the blood of Jesus over him, Father God. Master, I pray that you will sanctify our hearts continually, Lord God, that you will make us over and over and over each and every day, that we will take up our cross daily and follow you. We thank you, Father God, that you will send the good shepherd in this house, Father God. But, Jesus, we know that you ultimately are the shepherd of the house, Lord God. So, Master, we thank you. Father, we thank you. And, Daddy, we give you all the praise, all the honor and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, in the church said. And that's this week's message. We hope that you are encouraged and inspired. If you would like to join our online campus and experience the service as it happens live, go follow us on Facebook or YouTube 
by searching The River in Panhandle, Texas. Have an amazing and blessed week.